how much PBI2 will dissolve in a liter of water? Put another way, if you're given KSP, how can you figure out the actual concentration of a saturated solution? Check it out. When PBI2 dissolves, what does it make? It makes a PB2 plus ion, obviously dissolved in water, and it makes two iodide ions, also dissolved in water. So, given this equilibrium, we can come up with our equilibrium expression. Products over reactants. Products. Notice this is squared because there's a two in front here. Over reactants. But we don't include this because it's a solid and you don't include solids and liquids in your equilibrium expressions. Only gases and aqueous compounds. So this is the equilibrium for the dissolving of PBI2. And this is what we've been given, 8.5 times 10 to the minus 9. What we've got to solve for, though, are the actual concentrations. How are we going to do that? I propose using an ice table, because it's an equilibrium after all. If we take an ice table, we're looking for the initial concentrations, the change, and the equilibrium concentrations. This isn't even involved in the equilibrium, so I don't even care about this. But if we're talking about our PB2 plus and our I minus, they both start at zero. When we dissolve one of these, we get a PB, and we get two I's. Notice the concentration of I will always be double the concentration of lead. See? This increases by X. This increases by twice that amount. So the equilibrium concentrations are X and 2X, respectively. We've got to figure out what X actually is, though. Sorry, we have to use X because we have to solve for the unknown concentration. But don't worry. This gets easy because we just fill those values into this formula. What's the concentration of PB? X. What's the concentration of I minus? 2X. Don't forget it's squared. And that turns out to be 8.5 times 10 to the minus 9. <laughs> Sorry, I ran out of space there. When you multiply these together, when you square this, you get 4X squared then you multiply it by another x, you get 4x cubed, 8.5 times 10 to the minus 9. <coughs> now you just solve for x. Piece of cake. Divide both sides by 4. And how do you undo a cube? The answer is by taking something called the cube root. Now, I'm going to have to do this on my calculator. Check this out. Can you see what's going on? You can now. 8.5 times 10 to the power of negative 9. Divide that by 4. And I've got a cube root button. For me, it's right above my square root. You may not be able to see that. But I'm going to take the cubed root of that answer. Bam! I get 1.29 times 10 to the minus 3. Turns out x is 1.29 times 10 to the minus 3. So the concentration of PB2 plus that I end up with is 1.29 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. And because I only get one PB from each one PBI2, the saturation concentration of PBI2 in solution is 1.29 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. So remember that if this is in moles per liter, how much can I dissolve in a liter? this many moles. 
I can dissolve 1.29 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of PBI2 in 1 liter. Now you may have to multiply this by some amount in liters even if you're ever gonna not you know for like 500 milliliters or something other than a liter. Just as an example if I was asked for how much PBI2 will dissolve in half a liter, divide this by two. If I was asked for 100 milliliters, divide this by 10. Stuff like that. Now I understand you may not be asked for moles either. How can you calculate grams from that? Well, just don't forget you can convert moles to grams by multiplying by the molar mass. Now I don't really feel like doing that, but I'm a great guy, so I'm going to. 1.29 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. The molar mass of PBI2 is oh, approximately 461 grams per mole. And when I multiply those two numbers, I end up with 0 0.59 grams. I can dissolve that much PBI2 in a liter of water. Best of luck in your own saturation concentration calculations.